This here is a graphics card you could buy used today for just over 100 US dollars as of time of filming. That's pretty impressive. This is a Pascal card, it came out around 2016, and at the time they were going for around 400 to 450 MSRP. This for the one card was a bit more expensive, but uh, I mean, the fact that now you can get these for around 100 bucks, maybe a little more than that, is just incredible. They still offer very good bang for the buck, especially in 1080p for some budget builds you might be building in 2022, let's say a five or $600 intro gaming PC build. This is a sweet addition. But one of the problems with buying used is that, um, well, yeah, they don't look new anymore. And a lot of times what you'll find is that sellers won't bother cleaning their graphics cards by the time they sell them. Not that I really blame them. They're done and dusted of them. It's our jobs as the buyers usually to spiffy these up, make them look a lot better than they did when they uh, first arrived. And so that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to fully disassemble this card, deep clean it, restore it, and um, yeah, put it all back together in preparation for an upcoming budget PC build we have planned for the channel. Are you ready? I think you'll enjoy this one. Stay with me. Celebrating Intel Gamer Days, where you can find your favorite Intel powered products at great prices for a limited time starting August 25th. Shop entry level Intel Core i3 processors for budget friendly gaming solutions, or step into the big leagues with Intel Core i7 and Core i9 SKUs like the 12700K and 12900K. You can find great hardware combos from HP, including the Victus 15, featuring an Intel Core i7 12700 and RTX 3060, as well as the Omen 45L, part of their premium gaming lineup, and packing an unlocked Intel Core i7 12700K and RTX 3060 with plenty of space for activities. Also also, take up to 10% off select HP gaming products powered by Intel by using codes 5GAMER2022 and 10GAMER2022. Check the video description for more details. So this here is our For The Win GTX 1070 from EBGA. Again, several years old, though I think the design is fairly timeless. You couldn't tell just by looking at it that it was that old, and uh, it's one of the reasons why I like these cards so much. You can see the oil stains this residue here. This is usually from thermal pads uh, that just get heated up and then cooled over time. They're just the oil in them tends to seep out and stain back plates and the PCBs underneath. And uh, so we're gonna clean all that up. You can see there's a lot of dust uh, in and around these fan blades, like I mentioned. We're gonna be getting all this up. Uh, when you deep clean a graphics card, I recommend you fully disassemble it. There are a lot of small crevices here that you will miss if you just take a can of air and blast the, you know, the fans and the heat sink underneath. Um, there, there are so many small intricate bits here that we want to focus on. So let's kick things off by disassembling the card. This being an EVJ model uh, with a back plate, it means we're gonna wanna start back here and typically that's where you'll start anyway because you've got four screws that uh, hold the cooler or the heatsink assembly to the PCB. The GPU will usually be right in here and that's why you've got these four screws surrounding it. Just keep that tension over the die. Uh, if you have a back plate like this, uh, this one here, then you're gonna have multiple screws holding that back plate to the PCB as well. Sometimes there will be like a, a mid plate, if you wanna call it that. These EVJ ones have that. Uh, so just a few extra steps involved. You'll also want some sort of kit like this that includes several different screw heads. You've got iFix kits out there that are generally really good quality. This is a cheaper kit, but uh, it has pretty much every screw head you could imagine uh, for disassembling pretty much anything in the tech space. We're gonna start with a beefier Phillips head, moving all the way around the card. We'll get this back plate off. You can see we've got a few thermal pads here as well, which makes this plate uh, a bit functional. So that's nice to see. And a lot of residue on the back of this PCB, which is what we should expect for a card this old. Uh, just a few more screws now holding the circuit board to the cooler and the shroud underneath this. So we'll remove these two screws and these four surrounding the GPU. Uh, we've got one more here and I believe that is it. This one here might also be holding things in. This is for the back plate as well. So we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now we can flip this back over. And this should lift right out. Now you're gonna have a few cables, more than likely attaching this cooler assembly to the board. There we go. Yeah, just a bit awkward. And uh, check it out, this mid plate I was talking about earlier, this you can just pick right up at this point. And here we go. So this is the Bear GTX 1070 for the win PCB. You can see we've got our thermal paste there that we'll clean up and replace. A lot of oil residue all across this board, some dust caked up as well. You can see the backside. Uh, this looks pretty clean apart from the oil. That's because we had a backplate covering this for its entire life. This cooler on the other hand uh, is a bit 
dustier than I initially thought. Uh, we're gonna have to fully disassemble this. We'll take the fans out, clean individual blades all the way around, uh, and then we'll take the heat sink in particular outside, give it a proper wash, uh, maybe with some soap as well, do a bit of scrubbing and uh, try to make this look as brand new as possible. Now, one thing that makes these EVJ cards a bit unique is that in order to get the heat sink away from the fan shroud, we need to remove these screws around the edges. And these actually aren't Phillips screws, they're hex keyed, uh, so Allen keys, and we'll need a different bit for that. So we'll swap this over and then we'll disconnect all of these going around the shroud, and then we should be able to lift this up. We've got eight of these to remove in total. And now, I think we can lift this straight up. Awesome, and you can see the fans are attached to the heat sink. Uh, so all we have left underneath is just the shroud and a few wires because this has LEDs baked into it. So it's gonna make the disassembly process from this point forward a bit more complicated. You can see how much dust caked up on the inside of this shroud, very light colored dust as well. The inside of this should be black. You can see it's like a light tan color and it runs the entire inside of this frame. So it's uh. Pretty dang gross. And with this fan assembly, you can see a lot of dust caked up on the top side of the fins, but also underneath, and that's the part that uh, you can't really see until we take these off. Uh, dust also gets lodged in between these fins because, well, it can't really pass through all the way, especially over on this side. These are all flattened out underneath, so. Um, just another reason to take this apart further than you otherwise would have. First things first though, we gotta remove this thermal paste. It's actually uh, still a pretty good consistency despite its age. So not likely to affect temperatures too much. This might have been repasted at one point in its life as well, although the warranty seal was not broken. So unless that was also replaced, this is probably a car that's never been repasted in its life. Three Phillips screws in between each of these fan blades. Be careful not to snap the blades. You don't wanna to have to replace these. You'll probably have to order them from China and they'll take several weeks to get here if they get here at all. So with those removed, I think we can lift Yep, we can lift these up. We need to be careful though, because these cables are routed through these small little channels. Move that one out of the way. This one as well. Looks like we've got some tape that we'll need to remove. We can either reuse this tape later on after we clean it, or we can replace it with maybe some electrical tape. Shouldn't hurt. It just ensures that uh, these cables don't get snagged in the blades when the card's running. Ooh, and that's interesting. I've never seen a zip tie used by a card manufacturer before to hold cables down. Carefully clip that and these cables should, yep, should come right up. Okay, so now we just have the heat sink left to deal with. Uh, we have this little rubber mount. We can detach that, set it aside. But uh, yeah, one solid piece of aluminum. Actually, I think this is nickel plated copper. Now that I, that might be aluminum. Some of them use aluminum, some of them using copper. Uh, the pipes actually might be nickel plated copper, but I think they use aluminum fins just because of the uh, thermal properties of each of these elements or alloys. And uh, so yeah, this is one big piece that we're gonna need to clean. We'll set it aside for now. We've got a few other things to disassemble. Namely, all of this RGB stuff here. So we've got a few cables and a few adhesive strips. It's just, um, yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a mess. By the way, these cards are probably some of the more complicated ones that you'll come across. So uh, this is not how it is for every SKU out there. I'm kind of choosing a more worst case scenario just to show you, you know, what you could get involved in if you actually want to take it a step further and get all the dust out from everywhere. That's better. And a few more cables. And after a few smaller details, you can see now we have everything laid out on this desk. This is um, quite a bit for a single graphics card. Yes, it is one of the, again, more worst case scenarios, but uh, this is important because now we can properly clean. So we'll start first with probably the PCB. Uh, we'll get this out of the way and then we'll start cleaning the plastics and the Heat sink, the heat sink is gonna be the thing that we're probably gonna to wanna to use water for. We can also use water for the plastics as well as the other metal bits. Uh, but there are some, yeah, there's some thermal pads we still need to remove before we do that. Um, this here has some sticky bits on the other side that I didn't wanna remove just cause I don't imagine dust got caught under these. I don't wanna risk these not uh, reattaching properly. So uh, let's get to it. We'll clean the thermal paste off of that and then get this PCB looking brand new. First things first, 
picking up this thermal paste, which again, I've got to say is in pretty good shape, it looks like, at least consistency wise, uh, considering how old the card is. So we'll use a shop towel first, get most of it up. And then what I like to do is use this spray bottle of isopropyl alcohol and douse the GPU. Don't worry about soaking it. All of this will evaporate long before we ever power the system back on. We will take some Q-tips here and we're gonna carefully run around the perimeter of the die. We want to mine all these very, very tiny SMDs surrounding the die itself. We don't wanna dislodge any of these. And now we can move on to the remainder of the PCB. So again, I'm just gonna soak the entire uh, side of the board that we're working with here. And I am literally going to go section by section over it with some Q-tips. After this, we will sweep over it with our electric duster, get any remaining loose dust out, and the board should look pretty darn shiny. And here is the finished product. The board is looking so much better now. Still a few small damp patches of oil, just residue that I, I tried my best to get up. You can see, especially in the reflections where it is. Um, I just don't wanna you know, push too hard here and risk dislodging something, but I think the improvement is very noticeable. Also cleaned the ports here at the rear, and you can see the backside of the PCB as well. Much, much nicer. Now I wanna tackle these fans. You can see, especially under these blades where a lot of that uh, light tan colored dust has caked up. Uh, a lot of this is loose dust, so what we'll do first is hit it with the electric duster, and then the remaining dust will be manually scrubbed with Q-tips and IPA. And here we are, that was easy. Next I'm gonna use a scraping tool to remove the thermal pads on the backs of these plates, the mid plate and the back plate. Get these off, that one is ripped in half. That's all right. Get these thicker ones off. Easy does it, a scraping tool really helps here, prevents uh, tearing like you just saw. More thermal pads on the mid plate. These are for VRM and MOSFET cooling, so these are very important. If you're going to reuse these, make sure you take your time removing them, and uh, if you're gonna replace them, uh, you could just tear them off however you want, trash them. I think I'm gonna reuse these. They are a bit oily, but uh, I don't think I have the correct thickness, uh, thickness replacement thermal pads around, so. We'll reuse them. They're not in bad shape by any means. Last one here. Then all we're gonna do to clean up these plates is scrub them with a shop towel and isopropyl alcohol. And here we go, the back plate looking really good. It's not as clean on the back. I mean, it, it, it's clean, we just got the oil stains that again are being a bit troublesome. You can see my fingerprints as well. Uh, but overall, this being the side we're gonna be seeing in the build, this looks well, a lot better than it did before. Now, it's raining outside, so that means we're gonna be filming in my kid's bathroom, because that seems fitting. We've got the water nice and hot now, and we're gonna run these plastic bits under and get them all soaked up first, and then we'll take our toothbrush along with some soap. Foamy is how I like it. Get it in there and we'll just scrub all over. Same goes for this heat sink, using the toothbrush to scrub in between these fins and then around the cold plate, scrub everywhere you can. And just when you think you've gotten rid of all the dust, scrub just a little bit more. And we'll run this under the water once more. And uh, what we can do to dry it is use our electric duster, blast most of this water out and then we'll let it sit for a few hours to ensure all the remaining droplets have evaporated. You can also soak things as well. And if people see wires and small circuits like this, as long as you don't have any batteries or any current running through these, it's okay that they sit for a little while in fresh water. Just don't use salt water or anything crazy. Uh, so we'll make sure that all of the loose dust is off of these. We'll give them a bit of a scrub with the brush and then we'll set these aside as well to dry. So that's actually about it. Um, now that I think about it, this is the last chunk of gear here. We've got these small metal bits. We're also gonna dip in, make sure that these stay clean. But overall, we've taken care of all the major components. It's time to let them dry. Electric duster time.
And after that few hours of cleaning, check out how clean this shroud looks. So, so much better, not a speck of dust in sight. And if I do see anything, I'll clean it after the fact. Same goes for this heat sink. I don't see any dust trapped inside the fins any longer. It's so much shinier and ready for reassembly. All we need to do now is work our way backwards. A few extra things to keep in mind. You're gonna need to repaste the GP more than likely. I suggest you do that, start fresh. You don't want uh, to reuse old paste, you might get air bubbles and things trapped between the dye and the cooler uh, or the uh, heat sink and that's never good uh, for temperatures and your card will suffer as a result. Uh, so make sure you repaste. Uh, you'll also want to either replace or reuse if you've cleaned the old uh, thermal pads over the memory chips here and you'll also want to reinstall them over the MOSFETs things. Just make sure you put things back where they came from. If you're recording this or taking pictures along the way, those could really help. Uh, same goes for the screws. The last thing you could, be, uh, could do if you wanted to uh, really cover all your bases is to re-oil these fans. Uh, so you take some machine oil and uh, yeah, just lube up the bearings here uh, in between these. That'll really help uh, increase the lifespan of the fan, should prevent any weird sounds from popping up later on. So we're actually not gonna need the PCB yet. We're gonna need to reassemble everything into this uh, plastic shroud, including all of this RGB stuff. And what else do we have? Uh, some metal bits as well, yeah this stuff here. Looking pretty good, made sure to run the cables for the channels. We don't want these snagging in the fan blades when the card is on. We can now merge these two very carefully. And here we are, a fully reassembled for the win cooler. Looking nice, but we need to get the PCB together. So this will involve some thermal paste, thermal pads, and two metal plates. Just enough here. Want to overestimate a tad because you want this to spread fully over the die. You don't want to be short paste. And we'll get this mid plate back on. It'll just sit right here. Take care of the spring loaded screws. Make sure to cross tighten these. Uh, don't tighten one side all the way. You'll get uneven distribution of thermal paste under there. Again, not good for temps. All right, and finally, the back plate. We've got our remaining thermal pads already on there. Flip this over, set it like so, and a few remaining Phillips screws. There we are, not a single screw missing. This looks so much better now. A throwback to when this, uh, you know, when these cards were being sent out brand new. I just, I love the way this looks. Such a good looking card. I wish they still made graphics cards this way. Neutral designs, nothing too crazy, no weird shapes. It just, it just looks good. A closer shot of the card. Again, uh, I've got oh, my fingerprints are on it, especially on this back plate here. I uh, just gotta keep cleaning that oils residue. Love to show on this uh, reflective metal surface, but all in all, oh my gosh, what a good looking card. So glad we were able to restore this without issue. Or, or did I speak too soon? We still need to test this thing. I made sure that it worked before disassembly. I didn't show you that on camera, but this had been tested uh, right when I bought it, just to ensure that it actually did work out of the box. Uh, but now we need to make sure that our work didn't totally fry the thing in the process. So I've assembled a makeshift PC build, kind of like a test bench, just to uh, test graphics cards in the future. Now that we'll be running uh, more tests, just overall, since graphics card prices have come down quite a bit, they are more obtainable. I think we'll be using this for, uh, yeah, for benchmarks in the future. It's a 12th gen rig. That should have powered on. Did I wire the power button incorrectly? Let's just click the start button. There we go. Yeah, I probably wired that wrong. So we're gonna try for a post here and then I'm gonna run it through uh, Heaven Benchmark just to make sure that uh, temperatures look okay under a stress test. There we go. And I have a preloaded uh, Intel M.2 here. So we'll get into the OS and run that test. And there we go. I just love the superposition benchmark. It's so peaceful. But uh, this is a very heavy stress test on the graphics card and temps have leveled out right now in the mid 60s, which is perfectly fine for this considering the side panel is off. Both fans are spinning, no clipping. I'd call this a success. So that, uh, that wasn't so bad, right? And this graphics card looks so much better now. Not new, but it looks pretty close to new. A few oil slicks, things we couldn't really get 
all the way up off of the metal surfaces, but the board um, has been totally revitalized. We cleaned all the thermal pads that had really nasty dust stuck to them, repasted the GPU, cleaned the fans, cleaned the entire shroud, deep cleaned it rather, we, we disassembled everything and uh, it just looks so much better. Night and day difference, and with a car that already looks this good to begin with, that clean goes a long way. I've said it before and I'll say it again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with GTX 1070s in 2022, so long as you can find them for the right price, and I think for any budget build under, say, six to $700, in today's market, if you live in markets that are similar to US markets, I should say, because I can only really speak to domestic uh, pricing, uh, then I would recommend you at least consider buying a used graphics card. I know there's the fear of whether or not it was mined with the shortened lifespan. Yes, you have to weigh those against the prices of new comparable cards that might be a bit more expensive. Uh, so you're paying for that extra peace of mind, the warranty as well. Uh, but I've had generally decent luck even buying cards that I knew were mined with. They didn't die within the first two or three days of use. In fact, all, with very few exceptions, I think one or two cards I ever bought on eBay um, was either dead on arrival or died shortly after I threw it into a rig. Um, so I've had pretty good success there. And I, I mean, most people have. If, they, if it was 50-50 on eBay, nobody would buy used cards, right? And there'd be forums just out the wazoo about how unreliable secondhand graphics cards are. That's just not the case. Most of the time, they have plenty of years left in them. And as long as you take care of them, clean them up like we did here, I, I wouldn't worry. I honestly wouldn't. Um, if the card's dead, when it gets to you, just refund the purchase. eBay Buyer Protection Guarantee usually has you covered as the buyer. Uh, with that, if you want to find any of the tools that we use to clean this graphics card, they are in the video description. You can also find this card link down below if you want to shop on eBay. It's our affiliate uh, link there. Uh, we get a small kickback if you buy anything from it. Uh, but we'll link it to GTX 1070s if you're in the market for something around 100 to 140 USD. It's a pretty sweet value proposition for a GTX 1070, which is great for 1080p gaming still today in 2022. Leave a like, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for cleaning with me. Dang it, I just real I just put this on upside down. It's supposed to be flipped that way so you can read ACX 3.0. I'm a moron. I've got to undo this entire thing just to flip that back upright. GG.